I think we can all agree that 30 years of staying inside, eating like garbage and drinking soda as if it's water is probably not ideal for your health. And for anybody doing this, you're creating a really short path to death. Well, here comes most streamers that exist on planet Earth. They live inside of their room, they stay inside of their room, and they don't really go elsewhere about pretty much every hour of the day. Now, I'm no low savant myself. I'm not the healthiest guy in the world. But fuck sakes, I abuse anabolic steroids at times throughout the year. I do know a thing or two about health, and critically, I am coaching people mostly to get their health back or to improve their health metrics where they're currently at using lab work and many other things, obviously nutritional strategies, training, and etc. I've coached hundreds of people from all walks of life, high professional CEOs to gamers just like the people we're talking about in this video, specifically Asmogold. It is a really important thing that I focus on. It's it's a big passion for me to get people into a healthier state, and not just in their body, but in their mind, of course, too, right? It, it's to promote better lifestyle habits, because at the end of the day, we're a very unhealthy population. When we compare ourselves to other countries, United States is pitiful in its general population health. It's something that disgusts me just looking at statistics. Basically, one in three people in the United States is obese, which is, is just insane. If you go over to any Eastern Asian country where I lived, Thailand or Korea or Japan, you rarely could even spot a obese to even fat person. But here, it's just rampant. It's everywhere. And not saying that being fat is the only unhealthy indication that uh, someone isn't well, but it's also sort of like the internal system. You can be skinny, but have a generally metabolically dysfunctional internal system. And that's something we're going to talk about here today, specifically with Asmongold, who's had an issue with his health. And I want to react to it and talk about what he could do to possibly get things fixed. I, I guess I, I can probably just like say, uh, I, I kind of don't want to hide it a whole lot. Is like, so I've been having problems recently like uh like i remember remember the day that i ended my stream early so i went to the emergency room that day and because i felt like uh uncomfortable like a discomfort in my chest did an ekg on me and like they did all this stuff and they said that i was okay but my blood pressure was very high it was like because i i've actually been like i've had okay so for one if your heart's ever hurting or you have chest palpitations immediately go to the hospital I have a lot of clients who text me, hey, my chest is kind of feeling funky. No, 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 no. You go to the doctor because if something serious is happening, there is no one who can help you outside of a doctor in that exact moment. But what's interesting, and I think a lot of people disassociate being overweight and being skinny with being healthy or being unhealthy. And you can be very skinny and generally have a lean body mass index generally like Asmongold here, not saying that he is super shredded or anything, but he doesn't have a ton of fat mass, but you can, you can be this skinny and still have massive health problems. Most of the people I help with hypertension aren't actually overweight. They're actually really in good shape. They have, whether it's congenital hypertension from familial issues or just lifestyle induced hypertension, it's very, very common in people who aren't overweight. Of course, being overweight is a risk factor, but it's not the only thing that's gonna cause issues when it relates to having hypertension. Very bad stress problems a lot. My my policy is that what do I do when I'm scared? What do I do when I'm anxious? What do I do when anything, I'm, I'm upset, I'm sad? Uh, it's very simple. I fucking ignore it and I keep going no matter what. There's actually some merit to that statement and I think more people in our generation would serve themselves well doing that whole kind of thing, like just sort of ignoring fucking problems and simply move on because most people contemplate their problems far too much and their problems are far too insignificant to even spend time contemplating. But in this instance, I don't think that's the most brilliant thing to do. Of course, having heart health issues is like critical in terms of the pyramid of hierarchy in human life, right? Like if your heart's not functioning, you're going to fucking die. And that's not necessarily ideal. He also mentions something interesting, which was stress and stress related heart incidents or cardiovascular disease is actually quite common. It's not something that's unheard of. And it's certainly something that's been well researched and documented. It's a really interesting situation that through a nervous system response, we call this like the sympathetic nervous system. And it, it is counter to as it sounds, it's more of like your 
fight or flight system. You activate it when you are stressed. That causes your heart rate to elevate, blood pressure to rise, and generally respiratory rate to increase as well. And through that mechanism, chronic stress can cause heart issues. Specifically, heart morphology can change, so your left ventricular can get a little bit bigger or it can hypertrophy. And you can experience blood or circulation issues in your own body with a chronic degree of stress. However, I would say that when we're looking at a situation like Asmongold and asking ourselves, what is the issue that is propensity, like what's creating this thing, right? What is making him currently unhealthy? I would generally, as a rule of thumb, look to someone's past as opposed to looking at their present. Unless it's an immediate injury, something like bodily harm, the present's obviously going to be really important there. When we're looking at something like cardiovascular disease or heart dysfunction or just any kind of metabolic dysfunction, I think it's more critical to look at the past and see what's happened in the past 10, 20, 30 years of someone's life. In fact, most atherogenic plaque buildup happens in your youth, surprisingly. Uh, in fact, when they did an autopsy on all these people who had died in car crashes, this was back in like the 1990s when morals were a little bit skewed in terms of scientific research, but most of the plaque buildup they found was in people who were 27 to 30. It just wasn't significant. So you start really developing plaque through your early life and the habits you build through that period of time. So if someone wasn't living the greatest lifestyle, which, you know, Asmongold generally doesn't live the best lifestyle. It's pretty well known. He lives in a dumpster fire of a house with roaches crawling around. He eats pre-processed, pre-packaged foods, drinks a copium of soda with caffeine in it, mind you, which is going to massively elevate your heart rate and chronically do so and further induce stress that is not even uh, physiologically warranted. It's just sort of this chemically induced response to stress. You're, you're going to have issues. You're going to have issues, especially doing these things day in, day out, chronically for several, several years, little to no movement, little to no activity outside of just literally getting up and walking to your chair to start streaming, going to the grocery store if you need to, and moving your thumbs on a phone device. I don't know. I'm not saying this is what Gold is doing every day, but I imagine it's something sort of linear to this in, in a certain capacity. I'm not sure, allegedly. I'm just saying it's not healthy, <laughs> period, full stop. Generally, as a human being, you want to move quite a bit every single day. Something like 8,000 steps can reduce mortality risk by about 40%, which is fucking massive. I doubt Asmongold is getting that because general population of America gets about 3,000 steps per day at the highest end. I was worried that it was I, I, it, that it's killing me, and I'm concerned that it might be. And so I've had to dial back a lot of the stress. I've had to deal with this, and like my blood pressure was in like the 170s. It was really, really bad because of how stressed out I've been. So that's why I haven't been streaming as much for like a number of days. One day, 70. So, so I just had a, a nosebleed. And so I thought to myself, oh my God, because that's an indicator of, uh, of a stroke or like a heart attack. And so that's why I went downstairs to take my blood pressure in to make sure that I was okay. And I checked my nose and I found it was actually, I was just picking at my nose the wrong way. And uh, it seems like I'm fine. That's the reason why. And I, I've been exercising every day now and I've changed what I was eating too. Uh, already and I'm probably gonna have to schedule an appointment with my doctor about this to make sure that I'm okay Because it was really weird that I had like that feeling that's heart attack level. Yeah, it is But I just I just checked it. It's not anywhere near that. It's like 135, which is like that's not great But it's not also, uh, you know, like like worrisome So what he's referring to here is his blood pressure and having a, a 170 is crazy Usually when you, you get your blood pressure taken you have a diastolic and a systolic number the top one is the larger number and that was 170 which is radical that is close to a point in which you could experience a, a like literally the artery moving away from your heart could rupture that's how much pressure is built up within those arteries it's very dangerous it's just not good to be in this situation and i will say this from being in the military for eight years, right, in the army from doing lots of things, being a business owner, I get there's a lot of stress, right? As a business owner, especially a content creator, and I'm not even anywhere near his level, it's wildly stressful. I want to quite literally pull my hair out most days. I've never seen someone's heart, uh, sorry, blood pressure elevate to that sort of amplitude. I mean, that that is truly scary. Those numbers are terrifying. And if I was to see them, I would immediately start looking at everything I'm doing and make immediate changes because that is something that could kill you, not just in the long run, but in, in the short term as well. Boston Lloyd, a bodybuilder that we've talked about a lot on this channel, died because his left atrium exploded. 
<laughs> exploded due to high blood pressure and his was an even 170. So it is definitely something you want to be careful of. And in this situation, his blood pressure right now is 135. That's generally okay as long as we're sitting at or below 140 and at or below about 80. We're Gucci, right? Things are good. But as soon as we start creeping up over that and we're starting to get into the elevated territory of blood pressure, we need to start looking at what's going on in our situation. Now, a, a young, healthy male having that elevated blood pressure isn't super concerning, especially if they're hypermuscular. But having that chronic chronically across an entire day and having that when you know you're not living the healthiest of lifestyles definitely a massive concern right 135 is still high uh panic attack yeah cardio will help with this yeah and that's exactly what i've been doing and so that's the reason actually why i've been uh i've been doing shorter streams uh, i don't really want to talk about it a lot i i don't like to talk about that kind of stuff because i think it invites a lot of like parasocial stuff you know since i've had to end stream early a few days and like it's still fucking with my head like i uh oh god Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, and so that that's really it. You start eating healthier, it's catching up to you, bro. I think it's honestly stress more than anything else. Bro, there's no way in hell this is fucking stress. It is the lifelong damage that you've done to your body. And this is just very clearly. Like, uh, again, and as someone who guides people through this process a lot, and I'm not saying I'm, again, I'm no savant. I'm no critical expert. I don't have a PhD, but I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people. I've People pay me to do this stuff on a daily basis, and I do it really damn well, and I take pride in it. I'm telling you right now that this is from chronic abuse of a shitty lifestyle and not necessarily something acute like stress. Yes, stress is bad, and especially chronic stress is bad, but it's more like there's these comorbid factors that all sort of tie together and cause knots in the system. And those knots are where things go critically wrong. Like you have a human malfunction and it's not just stress, but it's stress tying into a really high consumption of caffeine. And then it's the high consumption of caffeine tying into a really poor diet, low in protein, high in carbohydrates, for example. And then it's another string tying into that low activity modulation throughout the day, uh, seated position causing, you know, constriction of, of uh, the limbic system and or not the limbic system, but the lymphatic system and all these issues stacking on top of each other. It's really easy to point fingers when you're unhealthy and be like, this is what made me unhealthy. But generally swinging that finger back around and pointing it at yourself and saying, I am the bearer of my unhealth is really hard to do, especially when you're involved in this really emotionally tense situation of being unhealthy. It, it's, uh, it, it's really just stress and it's a lack of exercise and so i'm going to exercise and stress out uh, and try to be stressed out less uh like because it was weird that stress is an insidious killer i know could be hypertension it is yeah and so uh that that's been the position that i've been in and I, i've been trying to just be on and you know stream as much as i can and everything and uh, you know say fuck it it's it's fine i, I don't want to i don't want to kill myself right which is weird right because like i've tried very hard to like kind of move away from like being afraid of like dying and, and like all that stuff but man that day i realized that like holy fuck like i was scared man i really was i ordered protein bars and you know we're drinking water now uh in between soda we're, we've got to make some we've got to make some improvement so i i don't want to talk about it a whole lot more and or anything like that it, it, it's it's whatever open a gatorade i actually did get gatorade i got gatorade as well Yep, there we go. I'm going to change my diet and eat a little bit differently uh, because I, I don't want to have to go on medication. Uh, I think that the first thing, you know, people people that go on medication die, uh, in my opinion. Like, I, I think that, like, there's all these times, like, I know people that are, like, younger than me and they have five different medications. That's terrifying. Absolutely fucking terrifying. And so I want to do whatever I can to, like, be able to, like, uh, you know, overcome it physically myself. I, I think that the human body is, is made to last. It's made to uh, endure. And I'm 34, right? And so, like, it, it's going to be a while, right? Uh, you know, I've been alive for a while, and a lot of my friends have already had a lot of issues. And so, um, you know, I think it's a stress. And, and I've been, like, not getting a lot of sleep uh, in a lot of days, too, with, like, anxiety. And so, uh, okay, there's a lot to decompartmentalize there. First of all, medications, I agree, aren't necessarily the best thing to get on because usually when you get on them, you're admitting defeat to a problem that you could truly cure yourself. Most problems are self-induced in terms of like the medical sense, right? And, and they are fixable, at least within the United States, unless you have something shy of cancer or something arthritis, something like this for the most part.
things are self-curable through lifestyle intervention and just living a better life. I will say, however, that when it comes to things like hypertension and elevated blood pressure, elevated heart rates, these are things that are slowly ticking away at how many years you have at life. And I, I've used this analogy a ton before, but I'm going to use it again for heart rate. For example, I get really on top of people about having heart rates above 60 beats per minute at a resting state. It's not healthy. It's not good. When we look at a NASCAR driver and he's driving his NASCAR around the track super fucking fast and the revolutions per minute on the engine are like 12 to 16,000, that engine literally won't last past that single race for that day. But if we look at a Toyota Corolla who's driving and has an average lifetime of like 500,000 plus miles or something, their average revolution per minute within that engine is like 2,000 revolutions per minute driving 65 miles an hour down the highway or, you know, 80 kilometers, whatever the fuck per hour you guys want to talk about. That engine lasts a lot longer because there's a lot less friction per time spent in that car. The same thing can be said about your heart or other organ systems. The more friction and tension that you generally create through your lifestyle and what you do, the more you're going to wear that organ system out much, much quicker. This is especially true for the heart, which is an electronic and a muscle, right? It's an electronic system that has a muscle on the inside. And as that sort of wiring around the heart gets worn from expansion and contraction and the muscle itself gets worked a ton, things start not to work so well. And those little electrical wires start to go afray. And suddenly you have a heart that has arrhythmias and dysfunction and all this bullshit until you end up with a heart attack or a stroke, all of which is non-ideal, right? We don't want that shit to happen to anybody. So my point is taking medication wouldn't be the end of the world as long as you rec recognize it as an acute solution to a massive problem that you need to ultimately fix. The other thing is he talks about protein bars and drinking water between sodas. Listen, I get it. Sodas are hard to kick, but drink fucking diet soda. And while you're on it, get a zero caffeine soda. There's tons of great ones. My personal preference, got addicted to it when I was in Thailand, is diet or sugar-free Fanta. Orange Fanta, man. This shit is crack cocaine in a fucking bottle. It's great. The other thing is that you need to be drinking water, but you can mix it up in certain ways. Using water flavoring, for instance, like Mio, is a great way. But in this case, you want to avoid caffeine. Like You don't want to be causing greater degrees of stress through higher consumption of caffeine. Absolutely no. Also, the abundance of carbohydrates and specifically sugar that is in and fructose, to be honest, in the sodas themselves just are not worth it. Drink diet soda. Stick to the simple shit. Drink some water with some flavoring in it if it's really that hard to get down for you. And just eating protein bars isn't going to get the job done. You have to fuel your body for function. And I know it sucks and everyone's like, oh, this guy's going to fucking talk about macros. I'm not going to talk about macros. But you do want to consume good amounts of meat, which Asmongold generally consumes red meat, which is great as long as it's cooked appropriately and shit it's great the idea is that you want to consume lots of protein lots of red meats that are generally leaner not super fatty cuts of red meat for micronutrients you want to consume as much as you can in terms of fruits and vegetables to sort of fulfill your stomach so that cravings aren't ridiculous and cut down on the direct carbohydrates cut down on things like breads and just general sugars right and rice is okay but you have to be creating a need for that glucose or those carbohydrates by exercising your muscles, training your body, using your muscles in terms of weightlifting, not just cardio. Absolutely a critical function of what he's doing there. You need to be lifting weights, not just doing cardio. Like I can't stress this enough either. Cardio is great, but it does also just cause more stress to the heart. You want to gradually increase the amount of activity you're doing, but training your muscles will create a massive, massive benefit in terms of cardiac function and cognitive function. And it'll create a bigger disposal bin for the food that you eat, allowing you to have greater margins of errors with eating a little bit of shit here and there and generally eating more healthy. This is how you would fix these issues and deal with them no longer and for sure not have health scares. And I think we can all agree that it's not fun having health scares. Like it is generally one of the scariest things to go through because you really forego your care about life until you're on the verge of potentially losing it or just on the verge of not enjoying life because you are sick. You realize how great it is to be healthy and how awful it is to be unhealthy. 
And the thing is, is that because we don't realize how great it is to be healthy, we often forego caring about our health when we are feeling generally good and only start to care about our health when we aren't feeling so great. The problem is, is taking the person who starts to care about their health when they aren't feeling great and having them continue those behaviors as they are feeling great, because the escalation of them feeling even better takes a long time. And that payoff usually doesn't come until years later and people don't find it worth it. And so they give up. This is a massive matter of true dedication and conviction to an idea of something that you won't achieve in the short term. And that's what makes it really hard. We don't get the immediate satisfaction of clicking a button and something comes our way in a favorable manner. You have to commit to it without seeing the results of it for years to come. But when you're 55, 60 years old with a fully functional brain and moving your body as efficaciously as the next guy, you're going to be really happy you did. Anyways, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.